Hi guys, um, welcome to part two of my Dart 250G uh, experience. Um, in this video, I'm going to basically just go over quickly uh, the ideas that I had from the first video in terms of things I wanted to implement into the plane, some modifications and some of the ways that I was going to set it up. Um, some of those things have uh, worked out and some of those things have had to be changed, so I thought I'd just cover those off. And then uh, we'll actually go out uh, into the field and uh, take it for its, uh, its maiden flight. So let's uh, take a quick look at the plane before we, uh, before we do that. Let's start from underneath. Um, so one of the issues that I had is that the, uh, the ZOHD um, servos that came uh, out of the Dart XL um, spare ones that I had, they just didn't work out. They jittered really badly, probably because of the crossfire. Um, so I've replaced those with some uh, Emacs um, Metal Gear uh, digital servos and they seem to work absolutely fine, no jitter whatsoever. Um, also this idea of putting the carbon plate over the crossfire on the bottom of the fuselage, um, someone on, uh, commented on the first video that that carbon plate might interfere with the actual um, antenna itself and, and maybe degrade this, the signal. So I've decided to do that with a, a piece of PLA. So I've designed a, like a PLA cover for the antenna and it's really solid and that works out really, uh, really well. Um, in terms of the, uh, the motor, uh, I'm still running the, uh, the Tornado um, T1, um, it's a 1407, uh, 2800 kV, and I'm going to start off the maiden with a 4.75 by 4.75 prop. Um, the, the hatch cover um, for uh, here, uh, which I've had laser cut out of carbon fibre, one mil carbon fibre, uh, added the little um, um, M3 um, nylon uh, thumb screw, uh, has worked really well, so I can unscrew this. Uh, this thumb screw and uh, I can remove the, uh, the carbon cover and it's simply got like a little latch that I have 3D printed underneath that actually allows you just to slide that under and then put the thumb screw in there so that's worked out really well. Um, okay so the front cover, um, let's look at the front cover so uh, I've mounted the, uh, the neck ducts uh, or the air duct and that's uh, mounted really quite nicely inside the, uh, the top cover so hopefully that's going to ram some air through to keep the Cadex Tarsier cool and I've had to chop out a little bit of foam here to accommodate the, uh, the GPS um, that uh, is actually mounted on this crossbar. Um, haven't had any problems testing the GPS in the garden and in the workshop with these two magnets, so hopefully that won't be uh, have any issue in flight. Um, got the uh, the lipo in here. Just let me remove this uh, this lipo. So I'm running a, a, a 4S 850 mar lipo. So uh, you can see I've got some Velcro in here to hold the lipo in. I've got this little lipo uh, 3D printed mount in here with the anti-slip material on it, so that's that's really quite rigid. Um, the Cadix Tartier has worked out really well in terms of this sliding mount, so you can slide this back and remove the Tartier to get access to the uh, SD card and then simply just pop it back into place and it clips in nicely. Um, I've also 3D designed and 3D printed uh, a top cover for the Matek F411 WSE incorporating into here the actual um, Crossfire Nano mount um, so I can still see all the LED lights on there. Um, and that keeps all the, uh, the wiring, um, the servo wires and everything else nice and neat. Um, so they're not going to get tangled or they're not even visible. And I've actually mounted that entire um, flight controller stack, if you like, onto the same kind of sliding mount as the Cadix Tarsier. So I can slide the whole flight controller assembly forwards and out of the plane should I need to do any maintenance on it. So that will make that nice and uh, easy. Um, the Cadix Tarsier itself is... Uh, mounted with the run cam mount as per the idea from the first video. Um, I'm also going to be running the um, the ND8 filter here for the Maiden because it's going to be a pretty bright sunny day here in the UK uh, in mid-afternoon um, with the sun being really low in the sky. So um, that's pretty much um, the modifications um, for the plane. Um, now we can go out and actually fly the plane on its Maiden. Okay I have a little bit of a confession to make that this is not actually going to be the real maiden of this plane because I did actually take it out yesterday for its maiden um, but it didn't go according to plan and I didn't have any DVR footage or HD footage to show you because of what went wrong um, but I will actually put a clip uh, before the real maiden now for you to actually get a feeling of what actually went wrong yesterday. Um, essentially uh, I launched the plane everything worked fine as you'll see from the video clip um, unfortunately there's no DVR so there's no aerial footage, but I have condensed the seven minute flight 
down as much as I can just with the audio stream so you can actually get a feeling for what I was going through on this maiden um, where the plane wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. Um, and even when I landed the plane, I still couldn't figure it out. So I, I basically contacted Mark Hoffman, one of my good friends and one of the uh, kind of INAV gurus from, from the INAV fixed wing group. And he, his first question he asked me when I explained what the situation was and that I thought all the control services were working correctly is was the CADEX TARCA camera uh, mirrored, i.e. Uh, showing a, a mirror image of what reality was. And I assured him that it wasn't. Um, so we did spend that evening yesterday evening uh, reinstalling um, INAV uh, 2.3 and making sure everything was perfect um, and it was only uh, actually this morning when um, testing the resolutions of the Cadex Tarsier in the workshop that uh, I suddenly realised that the sofa in my workshop is not on the um, left hand side of the room it's actually on the right hand side of the room so uh, then I realised that the Cadex Tarsier was actually mirrored and reversed so I did build a plane that made and uh, perfectly in the sense that it was set up correctly but it just didn't look like that to me because it was mirrored and it was really difficult to fly the plane so have a look at that clip now or you can skip forward um, to the real maiden and uh, I hope you have a little bit of a laugh at my expense but I can assure you at the time I really was uh, feeling rather panicked okay okay then well here we go uh, I can't say I'm not nervous it's been a while since I've done a maiden it was my Dart XL and that didn't go really that well at all so uh, Hopefully after all the time and effort I've put into building this plane, it will just fly like a bird straight into the sky, loiter around, let me take control, I'll do an auto trim, an auto tune, everything will be amazing and uh, I can go home and have a beer. So let's give this thing a try. Straight up, beautiful. Let's have a look. Is she loitering? Yes, she is loitering. Okay, let's get these goggles on. Let's see what's what. Wow, that's strange. It just wants to spin. As soon as I take it out of return to launch, let's put it into horizon. Horizon mode. See if I can take it out of loiter. I don't really have any control. Return to launch. Which is strange. I'm going to have to try and get this thing down somehow. This is going to be interesting. I'm sure I had that right on the bench. A lot of break up there. Okay, come back home. Try and get this thing down. The stick's the wrong way around. This is uh, pretty nerve wracking shit. Okay, so I'm down there. Whoa, it's down. The stick's the wrong way. Oh my God. Woo! <laughs> that was nerve-wracking to say the least. Right, oh my god. Where did it land? Ignition off. All right, let's go and find it. Oh my god, that shit my pants. Jesus Christ. Whew. Right, let's go and see where it is. Okay, so we've got GPS fix. 10 satellites. Um, let's give this thing a try. Fly, baby, fly. Wow, beautiful. Just flew straight out of my hand. Well, that's a better sign. It's loitering clockwise today, whereas yesterday it was loitering anti-clockwise. Although I think it was loitering clockwise, but it looked like it was going anti-clockwise. So let's get the goggles on and uh, see how this thing feels. And uh, 
do an auto trim and an auto tune. That's better. Oh, it needs a bit of expo, a bit of fidgety. Flying nicely. The maiden, I'm pretty pleased, quite smooth. Bit of interference in the DVR, it's probably because the ESC is mounted too close to the VTX. Um, James Mills did point out to me on the group, and he's right, so might need to rethink that if I can't live with it. Let's come past ourselves and see this little thing in flight. Why it's so quiet? Beautifully quiet. Okay, let's uh, let's get this auto trim sorted out. Okay, it's auto trim. I'm off the sticks now. It's banking to the right. Try that again. I'll auto trim it in, in cruise. cruise Alright, let's try that again. Auto trim. Okay, flying nice and level. Now cruise. For a, for a landing. Now I've forgotten with auto trim, do I turn it off first and then land or do I leave it switched on? I think I turn it off. I think it's auto tune you leave on. And I turn it off and land. Glided nicely there, so a nice landing. Okay, so that's the maiden flight done and landed. Uh, now I just need to disarm, save those settings. Now I will read my notebook and make sure I did that right, because I probably didn't. So, but uh, nevertheless, we can put it back up if I did it wrong and we can do it again. Okay, cool. I'm really happy with that. Really happy with that. Oh, and the. Uh, the DJI goggles, they were superb, so hopefully we'll get some good DVR. The analogue quality in these goggles is amazing. So much better than my fat sharks. Okay, let's go and get the plane and uh, set it up again. Okay, let's put a fresh LiPo in it and then we'll, uh, I'll just check my notes to make sure I did the auto tune right. And if not, I'll do it again, then I'll go up and do an auto tune. Okay, so that's the, the maiden of the Dart 250G completed. Uh, pretty pleased with the outcome. Really looking forward to getting to grips with tuning this plane and uh, trying different props and, uh, and trying different tuning settings and getting it on a much calmer day uh, and trying to really push through some of those gaps. That's the, the idea for me on this small proximity plane to start flying some gaps and might even take it to some urban areas or where there's some abandoned buildings and try and fly through some buildings or something with it. But uh, all in all, I've got to say that uh, I've really enjoyed building this plane and I'm sure that it's gonna give me many, many hours of fun um, and relaxation moving forward. It's a really a great little plane and it's it's quite amazing what you can pack into it. So um, yeah, if you're looking to get a 250G, I'm sure you're really going to uh, really enjoy it. 
I'll see you guys. Take care.